Give you a minute as you walk in. I'd like to, uh, to welcome the ambassadors, panelists, members, guests, distinguished guests, to the opening of the 65th Middle East Institute Annual Conference, and to say that you are really in for a treat today. The panels are terrific. I hope you'll be able to stay the entire day. You know, um, much as we Americans have our historical markers, uh, like the assassination of JFK, uh, the terrorist attack uh, in New York and the Pentagon, this has been a remarkable year in the Middle East. The Arab Spring or the Arab Awakening, whatever you want to call it, have been a set of pivotal events that will uh, be the historical markers for anybody in the region and anybody who thinks about the region. But not yet a year has passed since those uh, heady, optimistic, exuberant days of pride and empowerment uh, where the mood has begun to change. It's much more sober, it's anxious, uh, and there's been a little bit of a, a shade on the optimism that we saw at the beginning of the year. Uh, Libya, Egypt, Tunisia, the Arab uh, awakening countries are now facing uh, the next step. Uh, they were facing daunting challenges of democratic institution building, elections, changing uh, national political cultures. And the other countries, Yemen, Syria, Bahrain, they're struggling with conflict. Very different mood. Well, the MEI conference this morning is uh, an opportunity for each and every one of you to step back from your busy schedules, step back from what you do every day, and to pause and reflect upon the fundamental changes that, are, that have gone on and are going on uh, and will continue for many years in the Middle East. MEI has uh, made a point in this conference today of inviting voices from the region, people who have been living the events, participants themselves, to come to Washington and share with us their observations. Uh, just to mention a few that uh, will appear in the later panels, Jamal Khashoggi from Saudi Arabia, Abdulkhalek Abdullah from uh, the UAE, Paul Salem is joining us from Beirut. And I'd also like to thank all of the scholars and experts who've come from different parts of the United States to Washington, also to bring us a different perspective from the usual people that we hear from. Uh, Iman Babarj from Ashoka, who's actually Egyptian. Uh, Larry Diamond from Stanford University. Ambassador Dan Kircher from Princeton. Uh, Moshen Milani from the University of South Florida. Uh, Ron Schlicker joins us from Nashville. Uh, and they join some of Washington's uh, uh, most astute observers on the Middle East. Uh, and many are on the panel today and in the other panels, so I thank you all. As you know, 2011, as I've just told you, is our 65th anniversary. Uh, we've held 65 of these conferences now. And once again, but I'd like to uh, report to you that we have a record number of registrants. Uh, 1,200 have re registered. Now, we hope they don't all come at once, uh, but there are four panels today that uh, are, uh, are first rate and will attract different people who will circulate. So uh, please stay for the whole day if you can. Uh, we're happy to offer this event free of charge to the public because our mission is to promote knowledge and understanding and we think the best way to do that uh, is to reach as wide an audience as possible. So you are our guests. Um, many of you have registered already for the private lunch with, um, to discuss the peace process and the Geneva Accord with Dr. Yossi Balin and Sama El Abad. Uh, unfortunately, all those tickets have been sold. The rest of you, though, uh, will get to explore the different uh, restaurants and eateries around town during that lunch hour before we begin again in the afternoon. You know, as I look around the room, I see, I recognize many members of the Middle East Institute. Um, and I see uh, many others who are regular attendees of our weekly programs. Welcome. Uh, we particularly welcome the members and the contributors and the donors because that's how we sustain ourselves. And that's how we're able to put on events like this annual conference every year. Uh, so for those of you who enjoy our events, 
that we make free of charge. I'd like to encourage you to become members. We have a desk at the, uh, in the foyer uh, so you can register. It's only $100, and with that, you get uh, four copies of the, uh, our quarterly journal, the Middle East Journal, uh, and uh, advanced notifications and, and other um, online um, materials. So please join. You could also, at the same desk, register for a class if you're interested in learning a language of the Middle East. We teach group lessons and private lessons in Arabic, Hebrew, Turkish, Farsi, uh, and the registration desk is also at the back of the room. We have, uh, if you're curious about our journal, <clears throat> uh, you can buy individual copies there as well as some of the academic publications that we've produced, all in the foyer during the coffee break. For those of you who don't know us, maybe this is your first time here, let me just take one more minute and explain all of the things that we do. In addition to this conference every year, Kate Seeley, uh, who is our vice president, puts on weekly programs that are absolutely fantastic, and a little shout out for Kate and for Alicia Myers for the tremendous job that they have done with the help of very dedicated and competent intern staff. We host uh, a library, a little jewel of a library on our property at 1761 N Street. We've just engaged uh, with the support of an endowment from the uh, Sultanate of Oman, a, a professional librarian, so that's, uh, you'll have a research advisor uh, if you come uh, join us and come to visit us. Uh, again, I mentioned that we publish the Middle East Journal. We also publish uh, other online uh, publications, academic publications that you can find on our website. Our website is under uh, reconstruction right now and we'll launch a new website in January and it's going to be terrific. We proudly host, very pleased to host, the Sultan Qaboos Cultural Center uh, at the Middle East Institute. Uh, go online and you can uh, find cultural events that are coming up. Um, MEI scholars, there's over 40 of them, write frequently for the media, brief the media, brief government officials. Uh, and uh, uh, speak throughout the country. Uh, the Center for Turkish Studies also hosts an annual conference and writes and speaks. And the Center for Pakistan Studies, headed by Dr. Marvin Weinbaum, is, uh, he is indefatigable in briefing government officials, military officials, briefing the press, writing, talking on a very complex relationship that we have with Pakistan. And I join him for a little bit of that. So look, there's more I can talk about, but I, I want to move on to the panel. You can see we're not your everyday think tank. We're a unique organization. In fact, we're three or four organizations wrapped into one. And for that, it takes support. So I do appreciate it if you would consider uh, joining us as a member, or if you represent a corporation or an association uh, making a contribution. Um, we have a full day ahead of us. Well, panel, we'd like to get started on time, and it's, that's about right now. So let me uh, turn the floor over to uh, Graham Bannerman, who will be moderating the panel, Arab Spring Assessing U.S. Policy in the Middle East. Uh, Dr. Bannerman is a scholar at the Middle East Institute. He's the founder of Bannerman Associates, an international consulting, uh, consulting uh, firm. Uh, Graham, over to you. <laughs> 